So we start focusing on control affine systems like you said it is affine because there is no control connected to this term. So it is not even linear in the sense linear is defined alright. Uh, uh, we assume because we well we are interested in looking at equilibrium uh, the origin is the equilibrium we definitely assume that there exists a equilibrium control if you may yeah such that this happens. Okay, so there it, we guarantee we assume existence of a u bar such that f0 zero, 0 plus summation of u i bar f i 0 is actually 0. Okay, so we assume some uh, you know, equilibrium control existence also. Okay, uh, why did we do all this? <laughs> because uh, we could not get a nice uh, smooth feedback that we were looking for. Okay, so at least C1 feedback that we were looking for. We only got a uh, feedback that was C1 and, and uh, everywhere but at the origin, we, okay. At the origin we had, you know, we had this uh, lack of differentiability, alright. And it so turns out, I mean you can try different examples, uh, you can try different controls here for this particular example. It so turns out that for this kind of a system you will never get a feedback law U which is uh, you know smooth at the origin C1 at the origin ok. So uh, in order to give conditions for nice smooth controllers also at the origin because origin is actually a point of interest we do want to go to the origin uh, you had we had to specialize to control affine systems ok that is why we are looking at control affine systems alright. Um, we state an equi equivalent version of the control Lyapunov function definition. Yeah, for control affine systems. I say this is equivalent for this system and we will actually prove one half of it, other half is actually an exercise. Yeah. Uh, how do we redefine control Lyapunov functions? The first one is still the same, it requires a function to be a uh, candidate Lyapunov function. Yeah, so this is still the same, exactly the same, alright. Now, the second condition is where things change yeah for the control affine case. If the this statement basically says that if the contribution of the control terms is 0 yeah if the contribution of the control terms is 0 to the right hand side then the drift term has to give negative v dot. This is what this is saying these terms are what are connected to the control right. When I take v dot I will get del v del x f0 plus ui del v del x fi right? basically this expression that you see here on the left ok. You have del v del x time f times f0 plus ui multiplied by del v del x fi ok. So del v del x fi are the terms that give you the control movement due to the control. Now, if it so happens for some x that all these terms are 0, then the control cannot move the system, right. In that case, we require that the drift itself moves the system in the direction of the equilibrium, okay. So, when, when the control terms do nothing, then I need this term to act and give me a negative quantity ok. So that is what is this saying ok. How is this equivalent? I only prove one side like I said. Uh, I will assume this and prove the previous one ok. The other way around is the exercise. So if I assume this what am I saying? Let us choose an x bar such that this happens for some non-zero x bar of course. x bar is non-zero okay. This is what is this assumption. Okay, and I have for this particular x bar, I have that this happens. Okay, right? but then things are very after that it's very easy, right? Because uh, because if uh, this guy is negative and this is zero, this entire expression for v dot 
which we had in the first theorem right in the first definition we had del v del x f x u okay and what is del v del x f x u in this case it is precisely this guy yeah del v del x f 0 plus summation u i f i right so if there is no contribution from this guy so this guy is 0 but but then by this assumption i already have del v del x f 0 is negative so therefore this guy is negative okay so even though i don't i'm not actually taking any infimum over u taking any infimum over u is pointless in this particular case right because del v del x times f i is 0 yeah so there is no effect of the control at all but the drift term gives me a negative outcome which is what i need okay now the other case where these terms are not zero what happens if these are not zero okay the only two possible cases are this some at least only two possible cases are this is zero for all i okay and the other possible cases for some i this is non zero for some i at least for some i this is non zero that is the other possible case there are only two possible cases so what happens if del v del x f i is non zero for some i um, it's pretty straightforward see look at this again this expression of the v dot for some x star okay uh, if i just think of one control just to no, just to illustrate that there is only one control one control vector field then this expression looks so all right now i already so then if i expand it i have this guy okay if i expand it i just have del v del x f0 plus del v del x f1 times u1 but i have already assumed that this is not zero anymore we've already covered the case when this is zero so now this is not zero if this is not zero i can choose a control like this by inverting this guy so i inverted this cancelled this and inserted a negative quantity some negative quantity minus alpha yeah so therefore if you compute v dot in the pre like in the previous definition del v del x f x u turns out to be negative okay so i have actually given an expression for u yeah okay even if you had multiple controls and multiple control vector fields i know that for one i at least this is non zero for one i this is non zero then i will just make that ui to be this guy everything else will i will keep it at zero all the controls will be zero and i will just choose ui as this expression right here okay so then i have negative contribution i am done okay so this is how you can prove that this definition implies that definition for control affine systems okay the other side that is the first definition implies this definition for control affine systems is what is the exercise that you have to prove okay should not be too difficult now we have still not reached where we want to yeah we still don't have uh, this way of constructing nicer controls okay we still don't have a way of constructing the nicer controls okay that is that are smooth at origin and things like that okay we are still not there so uh, for that in fact we need something more yeah we are already at control affine systems yeah we need what is called the small control property so most of this work is due to Hartstein and Sontag yeah and in fact the references are also here um, so they actually you know proved all these results you can see the years it's 83 89 so not too recent actually yeah uh, so they sort of came up with this notion of small control property which is actually a strengthening of this control Lyapunov requirement if you may 
uh, for f control affine systems what does the small control property say it basically says that if your state is close to the origin then your control also should be small okay very reasonable requirement it just says that your system should not be ridiculous that even though you are very close to your equilibrium you need very big controls to bring it back to the equilibrium okay so that's sort of what it says so how does it again whatever we say in words we try to write in the math epsilon delta kind of thing that's what this is okay it says for all epsilon positive there exists delta positive such that for non zero x in the delta ball there exists some control uh, vector which is epsilon close to the equilibrium control and v dot is negative okay and v dot is negative i hope you see that this is stronger than the control lyapunov condition okay why because uh, in this inequality it should be evident that even if all of these are zero this is still required to be negative and that was the control lyapunov condition right the second condition was the control lyapunov condition the first was just positive definiteness so that is anyway you know there anyway okay so the second the control lyapunov condition this is stronger than the control lyapunov condition okay this implies the control lyapunov condition uh, so we need this condition to state any result on nice controls okay and like i said this is a very obvious result but we'll still try to look at it with some nice very very interesting example i mean these guys come up with very fun examples i can tell you that they can come with a counter example actually if you look at this system x dot is x plus x squared times u okay now i hope it's sort of evident to you that if i try to construct a control forget v and so on and so forth there is no i mean there is a v here sure Uh, but here we are not talking about a v okay suppose i want to construct a stabilizing control here all right uh, close to the origin you can see that first of all i will need a negative x so basically this term has to contribute something like a negative 2x one possibility if this term contributes a negative 2x then i have x dot is minus x and i know it's a stable it's going to go to the equilibrium right good to go the only issue uh, if i make this minus 2x and i try to compute a control out of it i may not be able to divide by x square all the time but the point is i will still have 1 by x type of a thing happening in the control right okay or if you look at it in a different way whatever control you have here is being scaled by x square so when you move far from the origin or slightly far from the origin the control effect is significantly multiplied but as soon as you come to x less than 1 okay as soon as x becomes less than 1 you start getting closer to, or norm x or absolute value of x becomes less than 1 you start coming closer and closer to the origin yeah the effect of the control is significantly shrunk yeah significantly shrunk okay so even if you try to apply a minus 2x out of this or anything that i mean even tries to cancel this minus x this x with a minus x you will still have something like a 1 by x happening and that's why the x squared very specific purpose so what does it mean it means that you will keep having to scale up your control as you get close to the origin right as you get closer to the origin control will have to be scaled up further and further okay i hope you are convinced so u is large for small x first thing second thing when x is negative when x is negative you have to push it in the positive direction so this has to be positive so control has to be positive so negative x positive control similarly positive x um negative control so what have we concluded from these three points control is large for small x in the positive direction control is negative in the negative direction control is positive so what happens as i come closer and closer to the origin you see what i have just drawn here exactly this here you big control big positive control big negative control got closer big positive bigger negative even closer very big positive very big negative 
so you can see what's happening this cannot be a continuous control at all right as you get closer to the origin control will explode in the opposite directions yeah so i mean it's not even a very very scary looking example i mean it doesn't look scary off the top of the uh, you know just just looking at it doesn't look that scary but it is yeah it's a very very bad system that you can't design continuous controllers for okay so this is sort of the example so this sort of a system does not satisfy a small control property yeah because e e even if you are close to the equilibrium you are not going to get this kind of property impossible you are going to get very very large controls in fact i mean infinite control if you get very close to the origin yeah okay unbounded controls okay so that's uh, maybe one of the reasoning why you know you this seems like a reasonable assumption that if you are close to your equilibrium you should have should require less effort yeah nothing very very bad should be happening with the system so this is a very reasonable uh, uh, sort of a control continuity assumption okay okay so if you do have uh, such a small control assumption then you have this very very strong result called the artstein sontag theorem and this happens to be a constructive result uh, in fact a const one of the few constructive ways of coming up with a control law if you are given a control lyapunov function okay so what does it say uh, this is called the artstein sontag theorem or the artstein Son i mean the corresponding control law is called the artstein sontag universal formula yeah what does it do it says if you have a control affine system just like we saw and if there exists a control lyapunov function for the control affine system then the system admits the small control property if and only if it admits an almost c infinity stabilizer with u0 equal to u bar okay so very strong result why it's a very strong result first of all it's an if and only if result yeah in in typical mathematics and applied mathematics if and only if results are considered very strong results because they're very tight yeah it's like this implies that and that implies this so you can't have one without the other. it's a very tight result yeah so it says basically that the assumptions that you made are the least required for you to have a control like this yeah so this is these are good these are considered very good results the other thing is because this is constructive we'll look at it later um it actually gives you an expression for the control okay now the only sort of fine point to see is that it says that it admits an almost c infinity stabilizer okay you already know c infinity would be in smooth okay and you know what is a stabilizer stabilizer just means that it, it the control will make you asymptotically converge to the origin okay so that would be a stabilizer but what is the almost the almost means that all the nice properties are still in a perforated neighborhood of the origin basically origin is not included okay all you can get is continuity at the origin okay this is what you will get out of this result okay out of this result also this is what you will get i mean uh, for systems like this with no small control property this doesn't exist and we've already seen that it is a very tight result so no small control property no all continuous stabilizer at the origin okay so if you don't have small control property there's no possibility which is sort of evident also right because usually control flips direction at the equilibrium right it's sort of very natural very intuitive that the control flips direction at the origin because in, if you're on one side of the equilibrium you're pushing it this way other side pushing it that way so very natural that if you're on the left you're pushing right on the right pushing left okay so i can think of this for aero mechanical systems with uh, you know position velocity as states but same thing can be thought of in electrical you know biological systems also one side of the equilibrium push one way other side push other way yeah uh, so um, so this actually gives you a way of constructing an almost c infinity stabilizer which means that it is smooth everywhere but at the origin where it is continuous okay so that's what uh, you can sort of achieve with this artstein sontag formula i'll just show you what the formula is very quickly and then we'll end yeah so 
in order to uh, give the control they use the of, of course the vec whatever elements are given to us which is the vector fields the control lyapunov function so you construct an a of x which is here which is coming from del v del x f0 which is the drift vector field yeah then you have a bx which is basically the vector consisting of all the control vector fields okay so uh, as you can see this will be a matrix okay what will be the dimension of this guy what do you think is the dimension of ax how many states n states okay so what is the dimension of del v del x huh no del v del x v is what what is the dimension of v i mean v is what v is scalar valued okay so partial of v with respect to x what is the dimension yeah you can say n cross 1 or typical uh, convention is to say 1 cross n yeah you think of partials as row vectors del v you write it as del v del x1 del v del x2 del v del x n okay typically this would be your 1 cross n vector okay what is the dimension of f0 n cross 1 right it's a just a vector field n cross 1 so dimension of a 1 a is a scalar excellent similarly dimension of del v del x fi x 1 okay so this is actually a vector then right this is actually a vector okay uh, what is the dimension of the vector it is m dimensional vector okay an m dimensional vector okay great so this is what is the archstein sontag universal formula for the control okay very cool control called a universal formula or many people just call it the universal formula or the archstein sontag universal formula but it's one of the few formula that gives you directly a way of constructing a control if you have a control lyapunov function okay this will always work this control is c infinity everywhere but at the origin where it is continuous so this will always work you can take any system any robotic system any aeromechanical system any electrical any biological system with a model and a control lyapunov function this will give you a stabilizing control okay and that's something super strong right and for any arbitrary system once you have a v you are coming up with a you basically have a formula okay so hardly do you i mean i don't think most of you would know of any nonlinear control formulas right that that you can just plug and play right you can with this okay looks very very uh, ugly actually for lack of another word uh, but it's actually quite nice and it behaves very well yeah it's a well behaved controller yeah again because it's c infinity everywhere and uh, you know it's continuous at the origin it's a very nicely behaved controller we'll discuss it next time so you can see i'm using a i'm using norm of b and b itself so you have a you know uh, so basically if you look at this expression uh, b is what defines the direction of the vector the, the control direction the control direction is defined by b okay and you see there are two cases here when b is zero and when b is non zero why b is 0 corresponds to del v del x fi equal to 0 for all i that is the b equal to 0 so that is how b is defined so if del v del x fi is equal to 0 for all i there is no point in applying a control because control has no effect anyway so what is the point apply 0 control okay but when if b is non zero if you remember what were we doing we were inverting that particular term right if, you, if we said that the second if del v del x f2 x is non zero then we just inverted del v del x f2 and created a controller okay but that's too basic because you don't know at which instant which one is going to be non zero so this actually generalizes that idea okay you don't know which one is non zero for that particular x so depending on whichever one is non zero this will work always okay so that's the idea yeah this is the universal formula and we'll stop here
okay all right